All right. Uh, again, good to see everyone uh, here today. Super to see you again. Let's go to the next So we've talked for several weeks about the events of God bringing His children out of Egypt. So we've talked for several weeks about the events of God bringing His children out of Egypt. So Izraelci šli iz Egipta. And just in this event alone, we've seen many pictures of Christ from this time. In tih dogodkih smo videli veliko prispodob Jezusa Kristusa iz tega časa. We saw the Passover lamb. Videli smo velikonočno jagnje. Which, as a matter of fact, would be happening this week, uh, uh, thousands of years ago during that time. Ki se slučajno dogara ono na današnjem teden, pač pred tisoči leti. Then there was the event that happened at the Red Sea. Potem videli smo dogodek pri Rdečem morju. Then last time we saw the emblem of the brass serpent. In zadnjičko smo se zbrali, smo videli ta prikaz te te bronoste kače. Today I want to talk about the man that God used to accomplish this great challenge of bringing his children out of Egypt, and that is Moses. Danes pa bomo govorili o človeku, ki je pripeljal te Izraelove otroke iz Egipta, in to je Mojžeš. Because Moses is a picture of Christ on many levels, and because of that our message is going to be a little bit different today. Mojžeš je namreč prispodoba Jezusa Kristusa na mnogih ravneh in k temu se bomo posvetili v današnjem sporočilu. So if you have your Bible, I'd invite you to Exodus starting at the beginning. Torej, če imate sabo svojo Biblijo, vas vabim, da odprejete pri Exodusu v drugi Mojžesovi knjigi, čist na začetku. Now we're going to look at a lot of different scriptures in a lot of different places today because of the comparison of Moses to Jesus. Gledali se bomo kar veliko zapisal, kar bomo primerili Mojžesa z Jezusom. And we're going to kind of walk through Moses' life from birth until his death and see the similarities. In sprehodili se bomo nekak skozi Mojžesovo življenje od rojstva do njegove smrti in bomo videli te podobnosti med Mojžesom in med Jezusom. Now we may not read every one of these passages, but we will at least reference them so that you can read them on your own later if you would like. Mogoče niti ne bomo prebrali čist vseh zapisov, ampak bomo pa povedali, kje jih lahko najdete notri v Bibliji, tako da jih lahko sami preberete, če želite. So the first similarity we see is the likeness of the events surrounding both of their births. Torej prva stvar, ki si jo bomo pogledali, so dogodki, ki obkrožajo nju narojstva. And we're going to see that God had a plan for both of them. In bomo gotovili, da ima Bog načrt pri obeh tveh. At the time of Moses' birth, the people of Egypt were becoming worried about the Israelites because they were becoming too powerful in numbers. So Pharaoh ordered the death of all the male Hebrew children. Za pravi v času, ko se je, pa preden se je Mojzes rodil, so se je Egipčani malo zbali številčnosti izraelskega ljudstva in so takrat zapovedali usmrtiti vse moške hebrejske dojenčke. So, I want to read that in Exodus chapter 1, if that's where you're at. Exodus chapter 1, I'm going to read verse 22, which tells us, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast it into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Torej, beremo iz druge Mojžesove knjige, prvo pogleda 22. vers, kjer piše, Na to je Faraon zapovedal vsemu svojem ljudstvu in rekel, vsakega dečka, ki se rodi, vrzite v Nil, vsako deklico pa pustite živeti. So, Pharaoh had the idea that if he could do this, that he would be able to control the population of the Israelites. Torej, Faraon je verjel, da če bo to naredil, da bo lahko nekako kontroliral populacijo oziroma številčnost Izraelitev. Obviously, it did not work, and if you want to read beyond verse 22, you'll see how that happens. Očitno pa se to ni zgodil in če boste pač brali potem naprej, boste videli, kako se je cela zadeva odvila. 
So Moses was born in this time where there was a slaughter of all the babies of that time. Тоді Мойсей се родив у тому часу, коли був дянсько покол у всіх тих утрок у тим часу. Now let's compare that to Jesus. Зде патолоко примиримо околищини при Єзусовому родству. In Jesus time there was a king of Israel at that time his name was Herod and he ordered the murder of all the children under 2 years of age so that he could eliminate what the wise men told him was the king of the Jews. Тоді коли Єзус родив, є живив крал, який се нарікав Херод, і Херод є равно тако указав побити всі дитячки, які са були младші від 2 років. So Matthew 2 verse 16 tells us more. It says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was betrayed by the wise men, was very mad and sent men to murder all of the children of Bethlehem and all the area around it from two years old and younger, according to the time that he asked the wise men. Тоді, коли беремо тук в Евангелії по Матею, пише в другом поглаві, в 16 версу, пише, Ко je Herod videl, da so ga modri prevarili, se je zelo razvizil. Poslal je svoje ljudi in dal v Betlehemu in vse njegove okolici pomoriti vse dečke, stare dve leti in manj po času, kakor ga je skrbno prezvedel od modrih. So, we could think that both were fortunate to live beyond their first years, but again, it was in God's plan. Torej lahko si mislimo, da sta bila oba dva srečna, da sta preživela, ampak to je bil vse del Božega načrta. So I want to read how Moses' family protected him, how he escaped death, and I'm going to read that in Exodus chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 2 through 10. Torej zdaj bomo prebrali v tem, kako je Mojzesova družina obežala smrti, in to bomo prebrali v drugem poglavju, druge Mojzesove knjige, vers 2 do 10. Now, several verses, so hang with me as we read. It says, starting in verse 2, And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark, we could say a basket, of bulrushes, and sealed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child in it. And she laid it in the bushes by the river's edge. And his sister stood a small distance away to see what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the, the basket among the bushes, she sent her maid to bring it. Verse 6, And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and the baby cried. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call for you a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the young girl went and called the child's mother, which would be Moses' own mother. Verse 9, And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give you wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of water. That's what the name Moses means. Torej, tukaj piše, Žena je spočila in rodila sina. Ko je videla, kako je lep, ga je skrivala tri mesece. Ko pa ga ni več mogla skrivati, je vzela košara iz papirusa, je zamazala z ilovico in smolo, Položila dečka vanjo in postavila v loče ob bregu Nila. Njegova sestra pa se je postavila na koliko proč, da bi videla, kaj se bo zgodilo z njim. Teda je prišla Faronov vahči, da bi se kopala v Nilu. Njene služabnice pa so hodile ob Nilu. Zagledala so košaro v ločju in poslala služabnico, da jo prinese. V tem predmo do šestega verza. Ko je odprla, je zagledala otroka, dečka, ki je jokal. Zasmilil se je in rekla, To bo kak hebrejski otrok. Na to je njegova šesta rekla faraonovi ženi. Ali ne grem in ti pokličem doječo ženo izmed hebrejk, da ti bo dojila otroka? Faraonova hči je rekla, pojdi. In deklica je šla in poklicala otrokova mater. Tadej je faraonova hči rekla, 
Vzemi tega otroka in mi ga doj, jaz pa ti bom plačala. Žena otroka vzela in ga dojila. Ko pa je otrok dorašal, ga pripeljala hvaravnovih včeri. Vzela ga je za sina in mu dala ime Mojžas. Rekla je namreč, iz vode sem ga potegnila, ker to je pomenilo, da je vžet iz vode Mojžas. So what an unbelievable story. Dost nevrjetna zgodba. Moses was saved and his own mother got to raise him and not only that, she was paid to do it by Pharaoh's uh, daughter. Torej Mojžas je bil rešen in lahko ga je dojila njegova lastna mati in ne samo to, uh, ona je bila še plačena za to, da ga je doji od Faraonove uh, hčerke. So, uh, uh, you couldn't really make up a better story than that. Uh, Mislim, težko zmisliti boljšo zgodbo tega. Uh, now we compare that to Jesus. For Jesus, the angel of the Lord gave his supposed father, Joseph, a warning. And we'll read that in Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. Uh, če poberemo pri Jezusu, uh, pa je uh, prav Boži angel dal upozorilo uh, njegovemu, uh, pač možnemu četu, Jozefu, uh, ker bomo si prebrali v uh, drugi uh, v Matevam Evangeliju, drugo pogleda, 13. do 15. vers. So I'm going to read now from Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. And when they were departed, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph <coughs> in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and go into Egypt, and be there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Torej piše, Ko so odšli, se je gospodov angel prikazal Jožefu v sanjah in rekel, Ustani, vzemi dete in njegova mater in beži v Egipt. Bodi tam, dokler ti ne povem, Herod bo namreč iskal dete, da bi ga umoril. Ustal je, po noči vzel dete in njegovo mater, ter se omaknil v Egipt. Tam je bil do Herodove smrti, da se je spolnilo, kar je gospod rekel po preroku. Iz Egipta sem ti poklical svojega sina. So, isn't it interesting how Egypt figures into both of their lives too? Zanimivo je, da uh, se Egipt pojavi v obeh življenih, v obeh, obeh oseb. And both of them were saved in a miraculous way. In now, since Moses had been claimed as the child of Pharaoh's daughter, he could have had a very easy life of riches and power. But instead, he chose to turn his back on all of that wealth and an easy life, and he identified with the lowly slaves of God's people. Ampak na mesto tega je pa može se obrno hrbati temu bogatemu življenju in se je poistovetil skromnimi sužni Božega ljudstva. I want to read in Hebrews chapter 11 verses 24 to 26 which tells us specifically what Moses did. It says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Torej, v pismu Hebrejcem, v enastem poglavi piše več, in to je od 14 do 26 verza, ker piše, Pover je Mojzes odklonil, ko je odrasel, da bi ga imenovali sina Faraonove hčere. Raj si je skupaj z Božjim ljudstvom izbral trpljenje, kakor kratkotrano uživanje greha. Z sramovanje mažiljenca je imel za večje bogatstvo, kakor zaklade Egipta. Gledal je namreč na povračilo. Now, we've, uh, we've probably seen through history when they find some of these tombs of the Pharaohs and even their relatives, they are surrounded by great riches. Verjetno smo vsi videli kakšne dokumentarne filme, ko najdejo te grobnice uh, faravno, pa, pa najdejo notri 
ogromno bogatstvo, ne samo faraonu, ampak tudi njihovih sorodnikov. And effectively that's what Moses was turning his back on to go and identify with slaves. In temu je Mojzes obrnil hrbat. Rajši videl, da ga identificira, bolj poštoveti v sužni. Now let's compare the life of Moses, what he gave up, to what Jesus gave up. In zdaj primerimo, čemu se je Mojzes odrekel, s tem, čemu se pa je Jezus odrekel. We know Jesus left heaven to come here to earth. Vedat moramo, da je Jezus zapustil nebesa, da je prišel sam na zemljo. What a comparison that must have been. Kašna primorjava bi to bila. Imagine the kind of life that he left to come identify with us as humans. Predstavite si, da je zapustil, kašna življenje je zapustil v nebesih, da se je z nami ljudmi, da se je poistovetil. We get a look at that in Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 through 8. It says, who, talking about Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, <coughs> he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jezusovo žrtev nam pokaže pismo Filipljanom v drugem pogledu 5. do 8. vers, kjer piše To mislite o sebi, kar je tudi v Kristusu Jezusu. Čeprav je bil namreč v podobi Boga, se ni ljubosumno oklepal svoje enakosti z Bogom, ampak je sam sebe izpraznil tako, da je prevzel podobo služabnika in postal podoben ljudem. Po zunanosti je bil kakor človek in je sam sebe ponižal tako, da je postal pokoren vse do smrti in sicer smrti na križu. So they both set aside royalty and privilege to come and identify with God's people. Torej oba to ste se odrekla privilegijam in kraljestvo, da ste se poistovetila iz Božjem ljudstvom. Here's another comparison. They both brought in covenants. When I say covenant, I mean agreements with God. In tukaj še ena primerjava. Oba to ste samo prinesla zaveze. In ko rečemo zaveze, mislimo na Sporozume z Bogom. So Moses, we understand, brought in the covenant of the law. And we looked at that a few weeks ago when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Torej, Mojzes je prinesel v zavezo zakona. In to smo se ogledali pred nekaj tedni, ko je Bog dal Mojzes od tred zapovedi. He also gave the promises of blessings for those who would keep the commandments. In Bog je tudi Mojzes dal obljubo, blagoslovo za tiste, ki bojo, ki se bojo držali zapovedi. And we can find later on in the prophet Jeremiah that God would reveal that a new covenant one day would come along. And we see that in Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 33. Kasneje v, tudi v Bibliji je pa prerok Jeremija napovedal, da bo Bog razvodil svojemu preroku, da bo prišla nova zaveza, kar se lahko preberemo v Jeremiji 31. poglavi 31. do 33. vers. So verse 31 says, Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with the fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, Although I wasn't husband to them, um, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So they piše, Glej, pride od nevi, govori gospod, ko bom z Izraelovo hišo in judovo hišo, sklenil novo zavezo. Ne zaveze, kakor sem sem sklenil z njihovimi očeti tistega dne, ko sem jih prijel za roko, da bi jih izpeljal iz egiptovske držele. To zavezo z menoj so prelomili, čeprav sem bil njihov gospodar, govori gospod. To je namreč zaveza, ki jo bom sklenil z Izraelovo hišo po tistih dneh, govori gospod. Svojo postavo bom dal v njihovo notranjosti in v njih srce bom zapisal. Jaz bom njihov bog in oni bodo moje ljudstvo. 
So what does that sound like to you? God's laws in our heart? Torej, kako se vam to sliši? Božje zakoni v naših srcih. For me, I immediately relate that to the ministry of God's Holy Spirit who lives inside us and that could only come after Jesus had ascended and sent us the Holy Spirit. Jaz to lahko povežem samo v uh, delovanje Božjega Duha v naših srcih in to je lahko prišlo še lepo Jezusom v nebohodu, ki nam je prišlo Svetega Duha. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is that part of God which lives inside each one of His children. Now we understand that the law um, given to Moses back while they were wandering around in the wilderness was given to show them that no one is perfect. Torej, zavedamo se, da, je, da so bili te zakoni, ki so bili dani Mojzesu, da so nam pokazali, da ni nihče od nas popoven. Although we could try, and the children of Israel tried, no one can keep all of the law perfectly. Čeprav se trudimo, in čeprav so se trudi tudi Izraelovi otroci, se nihče ne drži v popolnosti teh Božjih zakonov. So according to a po- to Paul in a letter that he wrote to the church at Galatia, uh, the law was given to teach us something very important. Torej, Pavel pravi v pismu Galačanom, da nas te zakoni učijo nekaj načesa zelo pomembnega. And I'm going to read in Galatians chapter 3, verses 24 to 26. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Torej, tako le Pavel piše v pismu Galačanom 3. poglavi 24-26 vers. Piše, to se pravi, da je postava, postava za nas vzgojiteljica, ki nas je vzgojila za Kristusa, da bi bili opravičeni iz vere. Ko pa je nastopila vera, nismo več pod vzgojiteljico. Vi ste namreč poveri v Kristusa, Jezusa, Božji sinovi. So it goes even further in Acts chapter 15 verses 10 and 11 to say um, this about the law of Moses. And I'm going to read uh, 10 and 11. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they are. Torej, to se razvije še naprej v apostolskih delih, uh, 15. poglavu, 10. in 11. vrstici, uh, ko govorijo o Mojzesovi postavi in piše, zakaj torej zdaj preizkušate Boga in hočete naložiti na tilnik učenca vjaram, ki ga ne naše očetje, ne mi nismo mogli nositi. Mi vendar verujemo, da smo po milosti gospoda Jezusa odrešeni tako, kakor oni. So you just see here how the law is compared to a yoke. Torej, a vidite, kako se tukaj zakon primera, primerja z jarmom. Do you understand what a yoke is? It's something heavy that was placed on a, a horse or an ox to pull a heavy plow. Torej, jarm je nekaj težkega, kar se da gor na konja ali pa na uh, vola, da, da vleče ta pluk. It was something very heavy. To je zelo težkega. So what we're going to see is Jesus plead with people to come to him because in his words Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30. Torej, Jezus je prosil ljudi na pride k njemu, uh, kot se bom prebrazdali v uh, Matejevem evangeliju 11. 11. poglavi 28 do 30. vers. You have to listen to this. It says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Torej, tako le piše, in to, to so Jezusove besede. Pridite k meni vsi, ki ste otrujeni in obteženi, in jaz vam bom dal počitek. Vzemite nase, moj jaram, 
In učite se od mene, ker sem kor tak in v srcu ponižen in našli boste počitek s svojim dušam, ker ti moj jarem je prijeten in moje breme je lahko. So we have a choice here. We can continue with the heavy burden of the yoke of the law and our own sins or we can take the yoke of Jesus which he says is, is light and which would you rather have? Torej mi imamo tukaj izbiro, lahko si nadenemo jarem zakona, ki je težak, ki ga je težko resničevat, ali pa lahko si nadenemo Jezusov jarem, ki pa je lahak in katerega bi zdaj raz imeli. So, Moses brought the covenant of the law, Jesus brought the covenant of grace. They both brought, brought, co brought covenants, though. Uh, they brought, they mm -hmm. both brought covenants. Yes. Moses of the law, Jesus of grace. Yes. Torej, oba da ste prinesli zavezo. Uh, Moses je prinesel zavezo zakona, uh, Jezus je prinesel zavezo uh, blagoslova. Now, we could say a lot more because there's so many comparisons between Moses in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament. Torej, lahko bi, lahko bi uh, pogledal si še več tih primarjav uh, o Mozesu iz Stare Zaveze in Jezusu iz Nove Zaveze. We know that both were transfigured on a mountain. For, for Moses that happened in Exodus 34 verse 29. For Jesus it happened in Matthew chapter 17 verse 2. Torej, vidimo, da sta se oba dva uh, spremenila na gori, uh, tako Mojžeš, kot tudi Jezus. They were both rejected by their people. Uh, oba dva sta bila zavrnjena v strani svojih ljudi. They were both prophets, they were both priests, they were both considered kings. Oba dva sta bila preroka, oba dva sta bila duhovnika in oba dva so smatrali za kralja. But I really want to focus in on these last aspects, comparing the two to conclude our study of Moses as a type of Jesus. If you're reading in the first five books of Moses, what you're going to see is several times Moses intercedes for the people. Torej, če preberamo pet prvih knjig Mojzesovih, vidimo, da on veliko krat posreduje za ljudi. And when we say intercede, what he literally does is he stands between the people and God. In ko rečemo, da posreduje, on dejansko stoji med ljudmi in med Bogom. The first time that we see this was after the Israelites worshipped the golden calf. He literally offered his life in exchange for the people. In prvič, ko ga vidimo, da posreduje, je, ko so uh, Izraeliti čestili zlato tele, je on dejansko ponudil, on se je hotel žrtvovati in je ponudil svoje življenje, uh, da Bog ne bi kaznoval ljudi. So listen to Exodus chapter 32, verses 30 to 32. It says, The next day Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin, but now... I will go up to the Lord. Maybe I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves God of gold. But now, please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. To um, uh, Moses of Knigo Exodus, 32. do poglavja 30. do 32. vers, kjer piše Drugi dan je Mojžeš rekel ljudstvu, zagrešili ste velik greh, a zdaj poden gor k gospodu, morda dosežem spravo za, za vaš greh. Vrni se je gospodu in rekel, oh, to ljudstvo je zagrešilo velik greh, naredilo so si bogove iz leta, vendar zdaj, ko bi ti odpustil njihov greh, če pa ne, izbriši prosim mene svoje knjige, ki si jo ti napisal. Again, Moses begs for the life of God's people in Numbers chapter 14, verses 11 through 20. It's a long portion of Scripture, so again, bear with me. It says, The Lord said unto Moses, How long will your people provoke me? And how long will it be before they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and will make of you a greater nation and mightier than they. 
And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for you brought up this people in your might from Egypt. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that you, Lord, are among this people, that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and that your cloud stands over them, and that you go before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and a pillar of fire by night. Now if you shall kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of you will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, Therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. And now, Moses says, I beg you, let the power of my Lord be great, according as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means declaring the guilty, clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the Father upon the children of the third and fourth generation. Verse 19, Pardon, I beg you, the iniquity of this people according to thy greatness of your mercy. And as you have forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned, or I have forgiven, according to your word. Štrnaesta poglavja, enaesti do dvajseti vers, kjer piše. In gospod je rekel Mozesu, doklej me bo to ljudstvo zaničevalo in kako dolgo mi se ne bojo verjeli, kljub sem z namenjem, ki sem jih storil med njimi. Udarim jih s kugo in razdelinim, iz tebe pa naredim narod, ki bo večji in mogočnejši, kakor ta. Mozes je rekel gospodu, to, da gibčani bodo to slišali, kaj ti s svojo močjo so si to ljudstvo si izpeljal iz njihove srede, Povedali bojo prebivalcem te dežele, kako so slišali, da si ti, gospod, sredi tega ljudstva, da se ti, gospod, prikazuješ iz oči v oči, da tvoj oblak stoji nad njimi in da hodiš pred njimi po dnevi oblačnem in po noči v ognjenem stebru. Četore, to ljudstvo smrtiš do zadnjega moža, bodo narodi, ki so slišali govorice o tebi, rekli, ker gospod ni mogel pripaljati tega ljudstva v deželo, ki jo mi je s presego obljubil, jih je poklal v poščavi. Ne se je torej zdaj izkaže, katera, kako velika je tvoja moč, gospod, kako si govoril. Gospod je počasno jezi in poln dobrote, odpušča krivdo in upornost, to da nekakor ne prosti krivde, obiskuje krivdo očetov na sinovih in tretjih in na četrtih. Odpusti, prosim, krivdo tega ljudstva po svoje veliki dobroti, kakor si priznašal temu ljudstvu od Egipta do tot. Gospod je rekel, odpuščam po tvoje besedi. So, we just saw the last time we met how Moses prayed for the people in Numbers 21 when they cried against God and he gave them the uh, brass serpent. So, <coughs> So time and time again, Moses stood up for the children of Israel, even offering his own life in their place so that they would not be punished. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Jesus also offered his life for the sins of the entire world. That's what Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God proved his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Tako le piše v pismo Rimljanom, peto pogledaj, osmi vers. Bog pa izkazuje svoje ljubezni do nas s tem, da je Kristus umrl za nas, ko smo bili še grešniki. Jesus also advocates and, and intercedes for us with God. And we see that in 1 John chapter 2 verse 1. It says, My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Torej, 
Jezus ravno tako zagovarja, nas ljudi in posreduje za nas pri Bogu, ker piše v Janožbom evangeliju, drugo pogleda, prvi vers, kjer piše, Otroci moje, to vam pišem zato, da ne bi grešili. Če pa že kdo stori greh, imamo pri očetu zagovornika Jezusa Kristusa pravičnega. No. I think everyone knows what an advocate is. It's like a lawyer, someone who pleads your case for you. Vse vemo, kaj pomeni advokat. To je kot odvetnik, nekdo, ki prosi za vas. And that's what Jesus does in our place when we become his child. In to Jezus počne za nas, ki smo njegovi Božji otroci. And once again, we see in Romans chapter 8, 34, it says, Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. In to vidimo v pismu Rimljanom, v 8. poglavo 34. vers, kjer piše, Kdo bo obsojal Kristus Jezus, ki je umrl, še več, ki je bil obojeno od mrtvih in sedi na Boži desnici, ter posreduje za nas. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says, Wherefore he, talking about Jesus, is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, or we could say through him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. Recimo, v podobno vidimo v pismu Hebrejcem, 7 poglavi 25 vers, kjer piše, On, se pravi Jezus, lahko dokončno odreši tiste, ki pa njegovem prihajajo k Bogu, ker vedno živi, da posreduje za nje. We've seen that Moses offered his life in exchange so that the people could not suffer, would not suffer. Torej videli smo, da je Mozes ponudil svoje življenje v zameno, da ljudje ne bi trpeli. He stood between God and the people and he begged for them. Postavil se med Boga in med ljudi in je prosil za ljudi. This is exactly what Jesus did and still does for his children. In to je točno to, kar je Jezus naredil in kar še vedno počne za svoje otroke. He gave his life for us and he stands between us and God and he advocates for us. On je dal svoje življenje za nas in stoji pred Bogom in posreduje za nas. So I want to talk about just one more thing before we, before we stop. Um, talking about how both Moses and Jesus led God's people out of slavery. Moses freed the Israelites from physical slavery in Egypt while Jesus freed his people from the spiritual bondage to sin and death. Mojžes je rešil ljudi sužnostva iz Egipta. Jezus pa je rešil ljudi te poveznosti z grehom pred smrtjo. And here's a beautiful picture of what Jesus can do for anybody who is a slave to their sin. And we see this in the Gospel of John chapter 8 verses 34 to 36. In tukaj je lepo prispodoba kaj lahko Jezus naredi za nas v Janozbom evangelu. So it says, starting in verse 34, Jesus answered them, Truly I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is a servant of sin, and the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So it's John. Yeah, I have here. Eight chapter eight. Yeah. Prav Evangelii po Janazu osmo poglavje. Što je tristi vers. Kjer piše, Jezus jim je odgovoril, resnično, resnično povem vam, vsak, kdor je delal greh, je sužen greha. Sužen pa ne ostane pri hiši za vekomaj, sin ostane vekomaj. 
So now, in all of these comparisons that we have made, the similarities we've seen between Moses and Jesus, I need you to understand this. Jesus is more significant than Moses. Тоді при всіх тих присподобах, які ми їх поглядали мет Єзусом і Мойсесом, це можна завідати, да є за нас Єзус був помімбан від Мойсеса. We could say that Moses was faithful as a servant, but Jesus was faithful as the son of God. Кара Мойсес си був послушан код служабникам, пак Єзус па є послушан код сім Бога. So again, Moses is a picture, yet Jesus is the completion of the picture. In Moses je prispodoba, Jezus pa je zaključak te prispodobe. And if there's anyone that wants to be free from their sin, you can be, but it can only come through Jesus and what he did. In če bi radi bili oproščeni greha, lahko ste, ampak lahko to postanete samo preko Jezusa in preko tega, kar je on naredil. So if anyone would have any questions about how to become a child of God through Jesus, uh, please feel free to ask uh, any one of us. We would love to show you what God says about becoming His child. Torej, če imate kakršno koli vprašanje, glede, uh, glede tega, glede tega, kaj piše v Bibliji, pridite do nas vprašajte, z vseljem vam pomagamo, da postanete Božji otrok. So next week we'll continue in this series of uh, pictures and prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament and we'll continue to look at all of these uh, as the weeks go by and so we would like to invite you to come here and join us on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Torej, naslednji teden se bom spet zbral tukaj, bomo spet pogledali te prispodobe iz Biblije in vas varbimo, da se nam pridružite, kot smo tukaj vsako nedelje ob devetih. But if you have any questions at all, uh, in the meantime, feel free to reach out to us by message, SMS, whatever means that you would like. Če pa imate kakšno vprašanje, že prej, uh, nas kontaktirajte preko SMS-a, sporočila, na kakšen škol način vam najbolj ustreža. So now we're going to take some time and discuss the message that we just talked about, but that's going to end the video for today. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Mi bomo še ostali tukaj, pogovorili se bomo Uh, pogovarjali se bomo še na prvi Božje besedi, uh, s tem pa zaključujemo današnjo video, poslalimo se vas od vas in uh, ne vas Bog blagoslovi.